Welcome to Munich. Today on our in-class field trip, we are going to retrace the same path Hitler and the Nazis took during the Beer Hall push. I'll also take you to many sites throughout the city which are related to the event. So here we go. We'll start our tour on the exact spot where the push began, the Burger Brau Keller Beer Hall. Everyone, welcome to the Beer Hall Push Tour. All right, thank you everybody for coming out. I hope you have a great time today. We're all standing right here for a very specific reason. This is our first stop. If we went back in time 80 years ago, you would be standing inside the Burger Brau Keller Beer Hall right at this very moment. The Burger Brau Keller Beer Hall was the beer hall where Hitler came and they stormed in, him and the Nazis. They basically took Gustav von Kahr and the other two Bavarian leaders into the back room where basically he held them hostage. Hours later, after General Ludendorff arrived, then they came out and very grudgingly agreed, okay Hitler, we'll accept the fact that you're leading this push against the Bavarian state and the German government and we will reluctantly support you. So this is where the beer hall push actually started. The Burger Brau Keller, as you can see, is no longer here. They tore it down in the late 1970s. So unfortunately, you know, it's lost to history. But there's one thing left that tells everybody here what was once here and what happened um, at the Burger Brau Keller. And it doesn't specifically have to do with the Beer Hall push. The memorial plaque about the Burger Brau Keller is right around that corner. You can almost see it. And I'll take you there right now to show it to you. So, I'm at the spot of the only reminder to people that the Burger Brow Keller used to be here. And it's this plaque right here. Let me tell you a little bit about the plaque. It's dedicated to this guy right here. His name is George Elser. He was one of the most famous people to try to kill Adolf Hitler. He set a bomb in the back of a pillar in the Burger Brau Killer. Let me show you a little good picture over here. Right. This is the pillar right in back of where Hitler's speaking of where he planted a bomb. And he knew Hitler was going to speak usually for about three hours as he always did. And so between 8 and 11 p.m. So George Elser set the bomb to go off in that pillar at 9.20, right smack in the middle of the speech. Unfortunately, the weather was bad that day. There was a lot of fog, and so Hitler couldn't take this plane back to Berlin. He had to take the train back. In order to take the train back, he had to leave early, and he left 13 minutes before the bomb exploded. Right on time, though, the bomb detonated at 9.20, and over 60 people were either wounded or killed in the explosion. And so this is a memorial dedicated to George Elser and what he tried to do. Basically, what it says is, here once stood the Burger Brau Keller, and on the night of November 8th, 1939, George Elser tried to kill Adolf Hitler and rid the world of the National Socialist or Nazi regime. He then spent five and a half years in prison, and he died in Dachau concentration camp on April 9th, 1945. So, this was the site of the Burger Brau Keller, and this is the memorial to the guy that tried to kill him at the Burger Brau Keller. And basically, that concludes our first stop on the tour today. If you follow me, there's a ton of more sites to see. Come on, let's go. These are photos from inside the beer hall that night. As you can see, the pillar was only a few feet from where Hitler was standing. Most of Hitler's inner circle was also there, including Hermann Göring, Joseph Goebbels, and Heinrich Himmler, the architect of the Holocaust. This film footage of the blast damage clearly indicates that if Hitler only stayed there for a few more minutes, both he and his inner circle would have been killed. The Second World War as we know it would have been very different, and it's even conceivable the Holocaust wouldn't have happened at all. 
The Burger Brow Killer survived until the late 1970s. Today, the site is occupied by the Society for Musical Performing and Mechanical Reproduction Rights and the Munich City Hilton Hotel. At each anniversary of the Beer Hall Push, Hitler and other Nazis would reenact the march they made in 1923. The event was highly publicized, and we can easily find the exact places where they once stood. So this was in the 1930s, and uh, you know who this man is right here? <laughs> mm -hmm. There's Hitler, there's Goring, and they're right here. Was this another column built for the Nazis? Yeah, that was a specific one built. So here's this Albert Mueller. Yeah. He was one of the 60 Nazis that were killed at Beer Hall Push. Uh, so they had their names okay. inscribed on it. But there he is. And if you noticed, we're on the same spot. We come upon the Isar Gate, which served as the outer boundary of Munich in the Middle Ages. It also just so happened that we found a site which matches a photograph from the Beer Hall Push March. This is another stop on our Beer Hall Push tour. We're at a spot where the Nazis would march right through this structure called the Isar Gate. If you look right here, you can see an entrance to the gate. And if you look right here, you will be able to see the photograph, okay? Adolf Hitler is right there. There's Hermann Goring. There's another Nazi called Julia Stryker. They're standing literally right where I am standing right now. So if you look, basically right here. As we pass through the Isar Gate, we find ourselves on Tall Street. This road is at a critical point in our tour, and we'll be making two stops. The first is at this building, where a turning point in the history of the 20th century occurred. Okay, so we're standing in front of an average building in an electronics store. Nothing really important about it now, but a hundred years ago, this place was really important. This used to be the Sternecker Brow Beer Hall. A hundred years ago, or well, right after World War I, Hitler was still in the army, and he was working as a spy for the army, spying all these different new political parties happening in Munich. And one day, he came to this place to investigate this German workers' party led by a guy called Anton Drexler. He entered this beer hall, went to the back room, and he listened to the speeches, and he made a few comments about it very loudly, and Anton Drexler said, hey, we could use this guy. And he contacted this guy and invited him to join the party. So Hitler actually met the party he is going to lead for the rest of his life right at this building right here. And it wasn't just the Steckerbrau Beer Hall. It was also where the Nazis had their very first offices. And it's right around the corner, and I'll take you that right now. So, here we are. We're at the site of the very first party offices of the Nazi party, right here. In 1920, it was a very, very small party, and they needed just a little office space. And so they chose, basically, a room from here down to the second window. It was a small room that they later converted into a museum. And I'm gonna give you a little special treat here. We're gonna go inside the store and I'm gonna show you the exact room where the Nazi party offices was. Not just that, but their offices was previously the place where Hitler had actually met the Nazi party. So it all happened in the very, very same room. Come on, I'll show you. Before I show you footage of the modern interior, here's a picture of the meeting room during the Nazi times. Notice the arch windows in the room, which will serve as my guiding point to locate the same spot today. All right, here we go inside. 
It's a good bet the people in this computer store have no clue what this place used to be. And here we are. So this is it. This is the room where Hitler came in and met Anton Drexler in the German Workers' Party. Later on, it's going to become the very first author's Nazi party. Again, you can tell the arch windows right here. That's the guiding point. And as you can see today, it's a computer store. It's just amazing how things change over time, but some things never change. The second stop is right here at the other end of Tall Street. At this point in 1938, a man named Maurice Beauvau made an attempt to rid the world of Adolf Hitler. Now, at this point in the route of the Beer Hall Push Tour, as the march Nazis were marching down the street in 1938 in their parade, a man called Maurice Beauvau stood at this very spot. Maurice Beauvau was yet another guy who said, I need to rid the world of Adolf Hitler. So he stood here with a gun. His plan was, as Hitler marched down this street, he would take out his gun and just shoot him point blank. Unfortunately, when everyone saw Adolf Hitler, what did everybody do? They raised their arms, right. And when everybody raised their arms, his view was blocked and he couldn't do it. And unfortunately, he was later caught by the Gestapo with his gun, where he admitted to what he was gonna do and uh, he was arrested. So it was yet another attempt to kill Hitler that didn't exactly happen, unfortunately. And it happened right here, as you're, as you're, where you're standing. Was he brought to Dachau? No, no. Beauvau was arrested by the Gestapo, put on trial, and was sentenced to death by guillotine. Our next stop takes us to the very center of the city of Munich. Okay, this is the Marienplatz. This is the central square of Munich. As you can see, there's a lot of magnificent buildings around us. This is the new town hall that was built in the 1800s. This was the meeting point of all the SA members during the Beer Hall push. At one point, there were hundreds of SA men all stationed right here, ready to go to get the signal to take over Munich. When the Third Reich was established, they put a huge swastika flag right over that clock. It was a huge flag that went from almost the top of the tower almost all the way down. It was one of the biggest Nazi flags in all of Germany. But Hitler and his pushmen went right through the Marienplatz on their way towards the War Ministry building, also, which was the their reason goal. why I call this the Marienplatz. Does anybody remember hearing about the Thirty Years' War? Okay. The Thirty Years' War, Bavaria was in trouble. There was an invading army that was about to capture Munich. And, but luckily, the city was saved from destruction. All they had to do was negotiate some terms and of course, give the enemy about 600,000 barrels of Hofbrauhaus beer. But they did. And the people thanked the Virgin Mary for it. And so they put this statue to thank her, and they renamed the central square of the city after her, Mary, Marienplatz. From the Marienplatz, we walk the last few blocks on the path the Nazis took during the push. We pass right by the Bavarian State Opera House and a palace called the Residence, where the kings of Bavaria would live. It's only a few yards away from one of the most famous spots in Munich, the Feldernhall, a military monument built in the 1800s. It was here on the left side of the monument that the Beer Hall Push March came to a very abrupt end.
Well, here we are. This is the spot where the beer hall push all ended. Hitler and the Nazis were coming down that street and they got to this point. It was right here where the Bavarian police were all lined up waiting for them. And initially, the Nazis came out and they said, don't shoot, Ludendorff is here. And General Ludendorff, of course, was a big famous general and they were hoping no one would fire and kill him. Um, nobody knows exactly what happened. All they know is a firefight started. It lasted about a minute. And in the end, 16 Nazis were killed and four Bavarian policemen were killed too. When Hitler came to power, this spot right here became a huge Nazi shrine. What they did was, right over here, they put a huge plaque with the Nazi eagle, the swastika, and the names of the 60 Nazis who died. And right below that, right here, they put a little memorial to the four Bavarian policemen who were killed. There were two SS guards of honor standing right here and here beside it. And every single year on November 9th, the anniversary of the Beer Hall push, they would lay on the ceremonial race. Hitler would be here and they would always do a big ritual. Every also year, they would also come down this road in a symbolic march to replay the Beer Hall push. But it all ended right here at this spot. This is a very famous photograph of the, what the Feldernhall used to look like in the Nazi times. As you can see, here are the two SS Guards of Honor. Here is the big plaque with the names of the 60 Nazis who were killed along with the eagle and swastika. And underneath is a small plaque dedicated to the four Bavarian police officers. You could actually still see the outline of this plaque. This plaque was taken off by the US Army only a few days after they took over Munich. If you look here in the wall, you can still see the corners of the plaque right here here, here, and here. So there's always a few reminders of what this place used to look like during the Third Reich. Now, there was one other thing that happened right here. Every single person who walked down the street was required to give the Nazi salute. And here's a famous photograph of that. You can see there's the SS Guards of Honor, there's the plaque, and there's the people raising their arms up with the Nazi salute. There, of course, were people who were not Nazis who didn't want to do that. And there was a way around it. It's right down here behind the corner, and I'll take you there right now to show you it. Come on. Okay, here we are in a place called Shirker's Alley. We're right behind the Felder Hall. And if you didn't want to give the Nazi salute, this is where you went. As you can see right here, they have a little golden path. That's a memorial to all the people who refused to take the Nazi salute and went this back way to get away from saluting to the Nazis. So all people did was they walked around this road, and today those people are remembered for not giving the Nazi salute, to standing up against Hitler and his regime. Due to its association with the Beer Hall push, the Feldern Hall was treated as a shrine after the Nazis came to power. The following footage is of the funeral to those killed by George Elser's bomb at the Burger Brow Keller. So by this point, you must be thinking, why did Hitler and the Nazis march through the streets? The goal was to get to the war ministry to help out a band of Nazis who were fighting government troops. It's only two blocks away from the Feldern Hall, and the building still The exists. building behind me is the former Bavarian War Ministry. This was the building where Hitler and his followers were trying to get to in the Beer Hall push march. As you can see, it's only a couple blocks away from the Feldern Hall. So they almost made it. There were a few Nazis who were really, really tied up here, and Hitler and his followers were trying to relieve that force. One of the people in the Nazi force was a guy called Heinrich Himmler, and as you, many of you know, he will later become the head of the SS and the architect of the Holocaust. And this is a photograph right here of Himmler and the fellow Nazis barricading themselves during the Beer Hall push march. This is the building that I'm in back of right here. It's a very, very famous photograph. Here's the photograph. That's Himmler in the middle, holding the flag. 
Our walk continues past the Feldern Hall and up Brienner Street to our final two stops. One of our last stops in the Beer Hall Push Tour is right here. If you look at this white square building, this is the brand new Museum of National Socialism in Munich that just opened in 2015. It's on the very spot of a very famous Nazi building called the Brown House. It was the Nazi Party's main offices throughout the Third Reich. It's important Beer Hall Push connection is the fact that in the Brown House, there was the blood flag. It was the flag the Nazis were holding in their hands when the Beer Hall Push took place. When the firefight happened between the Bavarian police and the Nazis, blood from the Nazis got on the flag, and hence it became known as the blood flag. And it was the most sacred flag in all of Nazi Germany. Hitler would use it to sanctify all the big Nazi standards that you'd see in pictures of Nazis marching around with. In 1944 was the last time the flag was seen. It disappeared and was never seen since. The Brown House itself was heavily damaged in World War II and of course they knocked it down. Right next to it is what they call the Führerbau. That was built in the 1930s as Hitler's main office in Munich and it's still around today. This is what the Brown House used to look like. In addition to being the home of the blood flag, it also contained the files of every member of the Nazi party. And this is actual footage of Hitler holding the blood flag while sanctifying Nazi standards. People can only guess what happened to the flag. Was it destroyed? Was it hidden? The mystery continues to this very day. The last stop on our tour takes us to the Temples of Honor. After the Nazis took power, they built these twin structures and placed those killed in the Beer Hall push inside. Along with the Feldern Hall, the Temples of Honor also became a Nazi shrine. Here is a very rare color photograph of the Southern Temple with the Brown House and Führerbau behind it. Now this may look like just an ordinary wall here, but this is no wall. This was the foundations of the Temples of Honor. The Temples of Honor where the 16 Nazis killed in the Beer Hall Push were buried from the 1930s to the 1940s. Here, guys, Only the I'll foundations on were left intact. The Temples of Honor. Ugh. As you can see, it's nothing but woods today. Just overgrown bushes and that's basically it. At what once was a Nazi shrine. Not much left as you can see. Mr. Butchko, what is this again? This is the foundations of the Temple of Honor on the other side of the street. Don't forget there's two of them. Again, they didn't, they didn't tear the foundations down. Um, in the 1990s, they were going to tear both of them down um, and put a restaurant in its place. But they found out a rare plant was growing on top of them, and so they had to stop it. And of course, they found out that plant was poison. <laughs> was it really? Appropriate, wasn't it, right? You know? Appropriate poison plant saved the Nazi Temple of Honor, a Nazi shrine. The new museum built in the site of the Brown House is dedicated to informing its visitors about Munich in the Nazi era. Its exhibits include the history of Nazism and how Munich played a role in the party's formation, along with how ordinary people reacted towards Hitler and his followers. It also has a research center where scholars, students, or anyone can investigate Hitler and the Nazi party. It also shows several videos, one of which is the destruction of the Temples of Honor in 1947. They were ordered to be taken down by the American authorities to prevent them from being used as a neo-Nazi shrine. The museum is an ideal place to visit for anyone who wishes to learn about the history of the Nazi party. So that concludes our Beer Hall Push Tour. I hope you saw a lot of sights and you learned a lot of new things. And of course, I'll see you on the next in-class field trip. Auf Wiedersehen!